So I'd like to introduce our next distinguished resource speaker. Uh, okay. uh, he is a graduate of the UP College of Engineering. Nasabing ko ba in year? Teng, BSM 85. Teng began his professional career in 1986, starting off with three years at the San Miguel Corporation's beer division as planning engineer. One of the most sought-after jobs in the 80s that it was to work for San Miguel Beer Division. So. From there, he progressed to 20 years of with Johnson & Johnson Philippines, starting with the operations and progressing through increasing responsibilities from project engineering, industrial engineering, manufacturing, ASEAN logistics, total quality management, Philippine supply chain, ASEAN and India supply chain, and Asia Pacific value stream. And with Del Monte Philippines, where he is currently uh, connected, for the last seven years as Group Head of Supply Chain. Teng is responsible for supply planning, national and exports, logistics, and distribution. Third party and non-pineapple in-house manufacturing operations management. So let's give uh, an imagineering welcome this afternoon to Mr. Teng Aguilar. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Huh? Thank you. Uh, well, good afternoon. So who are we? Del Monte Pacific Limited. We start off with the vision of the company. And tagline, if I simplify the vision, it's all about nourishing families and enriching lives every day. No? So dyan umiikot ang mundo ng company. It's all about health and wellness. No? That is our mission practically. We bring to life health and wellness. And uh, the reason why I started off with this, di ba? Ano yung company? Oh, the company is this and that. Hindi, wag muna yun. Later on yun. Dito kasi nagsisimula, any organization, any company, you have to be very clear on what is your purpose, what is your vision, what is your mission. Okay? Now, the supply chain infrastructure. Para lang i-describe ko, saan gumagalaw ang mga produkto, saan ang gagaling, saan namin ini-store, paano namin sineserve yung customers like Rustans, and then uh, makita natin yung magnitude ng operation. Uh, if you look at the demand centers, meaning ano yung, yung, yung percentage ng negosyo ng mga binibenta mo, the bulk really is in Luzon, obviously, 75%. And that is a, that is a typical statistic for many, for many companies. No? Uh, the balance, 25%, is equally split almost between Visayas and Mindanao. Uh, ironic, kasi ang lalaki nung ano, but Talagang ganun ang ano eh. That's the nature of Manila and Luzon, no? So that is where the biggest chunk of your business would come from. So, tandaan nyo yung picture na yan, ha? Pilipinas, 75% nandito sa taas, and then maliit yung porsyento dito sa baba. Now, produkto saan ang gagaling? Where do the products come from? Obviously, the pineapple products would come from Mindanao because that's where our plantation is. That's where our manufacturing for pineapple products is located. And then, the other products, yung sinasabi ko na 12 products kanina, mostly are in Luzon. Huh? So, anong insight mo dito? Malaking negosyo, pineapple. Malaking volume, nasa Luzon. Ang source ng produkto, nasa Mindanao. So, from a supply chain, perspective, medyo challenging yun. Because sinisip mo, madami, and it could be affected by so many things. No? I will describe that as we go along. Okay? Just, just you know, keep this picture in mind na uh, kanina yung demand, and then yung source ng produkto. No? Alright. Saan naman kami nag store ng products at paano namin sinaserve ang orders? Kasi siyempre, when the products are produced, you have to store them in distribution centers, and then when the orders come in, that's where you process them, and then you send them out to the customers. So, mini-mirror niya, yung, yung, mo, yung demand profile mo, in a way, no? So, the bulk of our storage facilities are based in Manila. And then, a big portion would be in Mindanao, and then a very small portion in Visayas, this is actually in Cebu. Because Visayas, remember, is only 13% of the volume. You know? So, ganyan yung ano, the way the, the infrastructure is positioned. Now, the next uh, set of statistics I'll show 
Gaano para para lang ma-visualize natin, no, my dear students. Gaano maraming goods ba ang iikot sa Philippine market, no? It says here 36 38,000 TEUs per year. TEU means or stands for 20 foot equivalent units, 20 footer container van. Alam niyo yung container van, di ba? Yung mga trailer, di ba, na may malaki, mahabang box sa likod ng trailer. Merong 40-footer, yung mga malalaki, meron 20-footer. We, we use 20-footer container vans. Now, if I translate yung lahat ng ginagalaw namin na produkto from the source to the warehouse to the customer, some are actually in 20-footer vans because it oversee, di ba? And then some are actually in trucks from the warehouse to the customer. So, if I translate ko yun into 20-footer equivalents, it's only 40,000. So imagine 40,000 container vans ang, ang ibinibit-bit mo in a whole year. So that is fairly complex. I think na touch kanina about infrastructure and so on. If I was asked that question kanina, if I would be asked by the government, what do you need? Multimodal transport infrastructure. Multimodal. No? If you give that to me, I will be very happy. I'll explain to you why we need that. No? Uh, now, there is a no, there is a, 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 a bullet statement here, no? the third one. See this? It says there are peak season months, September, October, November, December. Anong panahon yan? Christmas, di ba? Christmas, pagka Christmas, anong ginagawa sa mga pamilya? Handaan, di ba? Handaan. Sigurado may food salad. Sigurado may spaghetti. Kaya ang volume pattern, ang demand pattern, magsushoot up by a very significant degree during that time. So, anong insight nun? Anong implication nun for us in supply chain? Remember, sa industriya, hindi lang naman kami ang nasa industriya, di ba? There are other products and companies na nasa ang produkto nila, eh, pagkain din, or pag-season, talagang nagsushoot up, right? So, yung industriya itself will be overloaded. Magsasabay-sabay ang volume, mga truck demand, mga, kaya nagmamahal ang truck rates, by the way, and then there's also risk na makocongest ang ports o may potential delay ang mga deliveries mo. So that is an important insight you can get out of this slide. Okay? Sige. Okay, boom! <laughs> don't worry. Ginigising ko lang kayo but you don't have to read everything. Parang, I just tried, anyway, I think you have access to this material. Parang pinagsama-sama ko lahat. Where does everything, where do everything come from and where do they move to? So, hindi ko na ayan yan, but essentially, towards the left side, yung sources mo ng materials, you manage suppliers, and so on, and then you have your plantation operations, and then you bring those materials to your factories, etc., etc., and then you ship everything to your uh, different distribution centers, and then you send everything to your customers, depende kung nasaan sila, depende kung mga mala Shumart sila, or Rustan sila, or mga distributors namin na umaabot sa mga sari-sari store, and so on and so forth. So, yan yung the overall picture of supply chain and everything that moves across. Hindi ko didetalihin na yan. Mas importante yung susunod na slides para makonek-konek natin, no? Uh, Yung exports, mas simple, by the way. You'll notice, hindi ko masyadong tinatch yung export because from a supply chain point of view, uh, from our perspective, ang nature ng pag-produce ng export items is that what I produce, na, what I need to ship, for example, this month, I produce this month. Hindi kagaya ng yung, yung fast-moving retail for the Philippines. You have to pay the firm, you have to forecast that, and then you have to build the inventory, and then eh, all the complexities na. And iisa lang ang destination niya international port sa Cagayan de Oro. That's it. So, iisa lang ang pinupuntahan as compared to serving almost a thousand ship to destinations of all of your customers. Okay? So, eto ngayon, medyo dito ko ikikwento, ano ba mahirap dito sa pineapple na to? Uh, the pineapple is a raw material for us. And then when uh, tin tinuturo sa IE yung mga related to manufacturing, supply chain planning. I think may mga ganyang subjects, di ba? Uh, when you make products, you have to know what, is the, what are the components, parang yan ang recipe mo, and then you can translate how much 
etc., etc. Ito ngayon, I will share with you this whole thing about the pineapple. Yung fruit, makikita nyo dyan, merong slice, merong may pwede maging chunk, or tidbits, or maging crust. And then, uh, yung nasa gitna, I'm sure many of you, hindi nyo kinakain yung nasa gitna, di ba? Pag bumili kayo ng pineapple fruit, slice, slice, slice nyo, tinatapon nyo, that is where the primary top quality juice come from. Tsaka it's, why don't, why don't you eat it? It's, it's good because it's fiber and all that, di ba? So, masarap siya, wag yung itapon. Kumbaga. But that is where the juice would come from. By, by the way, the fruit is sliced and peeled by a machine. No? So, machine ang nag ano niyan. Uh, so, in other words, ang complexity dito, a fruit would contain different types of products. And uh, by itself, that is one level of complexity. Next layer of complexity. When you harvest a field, hindi naman pare-pareho laki ng fruit, di ba? Agriculture product yan eh. There are four sizes, no? We call two and a half tall, two tall, one tall, sub one tall. So in other words, uh, how do you call that? Permutation ba tawag doon? So parang that's four, four dimensions eh, di ba? So kasama yan sa equation. Apat na iba-ibang sizes. Next, layer of permutation ripeness level there are six ripeness levels one two three four five six no uh, meron ng ano yan eh kumbaga sanay na yung company tsaka the people by looking at the shell color by the way di ba yung mga pagpupunta kayo sa tagaytay oh daming naglalako ng pineapple sa gilid di ba every time i pass through that and i see this color ah, mga overripe Never buy any pineapple fruit na ganito na ang kulay. Overripe na yon. So you buy somewhere around here. Yung ganyan ng itsura. O yan ha, so may tip ako sa inyo ha. Uh, huwag kayong bibili ng ganito. Ang dami niyan sa Tagaytay. <laughs> so overripe yan, overripe yan. Now, this is a, a, an important factor because it affects the productivity of the factory. Pag masyadong ripe, nagbe-break na yung meat. So, hindi efficient yung recovery mo ng material. Pag masyadong hilaw, hindi rin pa pwede. Kasi, merong requirements ang market. I'll show you that, ano, I'll show you that next layer of, ano, next layer of complexity. Next one, color. Pineapple color. May tinatawag na pale yellow, pale to light yellow, golden yellow. So, nakita mo na, meron size, merong pale yellow, blah, 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 blah. So, there are different markets who require different levels of color. So, komplikado, di ba? Uh, there are markets who like pale yellow. The U.S. market is essentially golden yellow. Europe would be somewhere around here. The Philippines is somewhere around here. A little more on the pale yellow color, no? And there's another, ano pa, another permutation. Hindi ko lang mailagay sa picture. Wala akong nakuang picture. But it's meat quality. This is another layer of permutation. There's what you call fancy, choice, and then standard. It's the quality of the meat. Yung makikita mo pag yung, solid, yung buong buo, fancy. Pag medyo may mga breaks na in between, although buo pa rin yung slice, medyo nandun doon sa choice at standard. So that's another layer of ano, permutation na naman. Next one, I think, uh, I think this is the last one, but there are also other product configurations that adds to the further complexity of producing these products. And it's about the size of the can. Merong one flat, <laughs> merong two tall can, merong two and a half tall can, at saka merong number 10. So, combination yan. At hindi pa tapos. Meron sa pang layer of complexity again, or permutation. Ano yung medium sa loob? Di ba? Pag binuksan mo yung slices, merong liquid, di ba? Anong gusto mo? 100% pineapple juice, beverage juice, sugar syrup, extra light syrup, heavy syrup, at meron pang iba pa yan. So, 
So that is, ano, that is the nature of the, ano, that's the nature of the product. That's the nature of the market. No? That's what they want and so on. So it really makes it very complex. No? But it's fun. No? And yeah, it's nice. No? The, the people are experienced. They've been doing that for so many years. This one is the last information about the pineapple that I want to share, which really bears on the supply chain. No? Did you know that it takes 18 months from the time you plant the seed to the time you harvest the fruit for a pineapple? 18 months. But before that, you have to prepare the land for about five months. In other words, what does that imply? Ang haba haba ng lead time ng important raw material mo. No? So, 18 months. By the way, ang seed ng pineapple, yung crown. Did you know that? That is another trivia for you. The crown is actually the seed. Kaya yung operation ni Del Monte, pag nag-harvest na yung machine na ganun, pinipick yung fruit, tinatanggal yung crown, the crowns are gathered, they are prepared, and then they are planted again. So, pag bumili kayo ng pineapple sa bahay, kunin nyo yung crown, ilagay nyo sa lupa. <coughs> 18 months later, may pineapple ka sa bahay mo. Maaantay mo yung 18 months, di ba? And then, that's the first cycle ng fruiting niya. If you let the plant stay after harvesting 18 months after, it will bear fruit again on the 32nd month. Ganun siya. Kumbaga, yan eh, di ba? So, magbunga, hinarvest, may lalabas uling, ano, ang term nila, sucker ang term doon, magbubunga uli. Pag kinuha mo yun, actually magbubunga yun. But the quality of the fruit starts to go down, yung size. So, yung company, they only go up to the second fruiting. No? So, yan. You have a very long lead time critical material, critical, uh, critical uh, component of your products. So, uh, remember that 24,000 hectares? Now, just to, again, just to visualize and to, uh, for us to, s to see what's happening every day, about 2,000 500 metric tons of pineapples would be brought to the cannery every day. 2,500. Um, that's a lot. You know? uh, metric tons yun, ah? Metric tons. And uh, that quantity of fruits came from a plot of land that was planted when? 18 months ago. Tomorrow, another 2,500 metric tons of pineapples will come and that was also planted 18 months ago. So, ganun siya, lead time. No? Remember, for supply chain, lead time is a very critical variable. So, is the parang a very big factor that drives the complexity of the supply chain that we have. Alright, what you see actually is a multiple variable, long lead time, as we said, key raw material, and then naapektuhan pa siya ng nature. Uh, Another trivia, we don't water the fruits, ah. How can you water 24,000 hectares? Hindi yan dinidiligan. You rely on rainfall. And it's okay because the pineapple plant, I understand, belongs to the cactus family. In fact, it doesn't like too much water. If there's too much rain, the sweetness will be affected. Kaya tama yung commercial before eh, yung sunshine and all that, that's true. Elevation equally affects it, the properties, no? Bukidnon is very ideal because Bukidnon is practically elevate, high elevation. So, marami siyang variable. The other, the other operational issue pag maraming ulan is you cannot harvest. Because, number one, it's dangerous for the workers because of lightning strikes. Lightning strikes. Second, it's operational difficult kasi magiging maputik yung, yung soil. Mahihirapan ilabas yung fruits. And then third, ang problema when that happens, because the fruit will stay, di ba? Kunyari, today it's due to be picked. And then ulan-ulan, it stay there for three more days. What happens? Additional ripeness, magiging overripe. Then it becomes practically not good anymore for processing. So... Ma mahirap din yung ginagawa ng mga plantation team sa bukid noon no it's a it's a very difficult science and practical experience that they have to match no 
po, no, to be able to manage all of that planting and harvesting. All right, ito na. Uh, I'm going to the last few slides na lang. Um, ito yung, ito basic, eh, nakita nyo yung negosyo, no? yung importance ng markets, yung layo ng, ano, ng pinanggagalingan, and then all of these complicating factors of the most important item, which is the pineapple fruit, di ba? The long lead time will definitely be a challenge. Bakit ka mo? The demand can go up and down, right? When I say demand, ito yung marami bumibili and so on. If the demand goes up <coughs> significantly, can you actually get more pineapples? You cannot. Because it's been planted 18 months back. Hindi kagaya yan ng, oh, I need more raw material. Tawagan ko yung you give me more pieces of this material, okay lang. But the pineapple, you cannot rush the fruits from coming out. No? Pag the dem if the demand goes down significantly, what happens? You cannot stop the fruits from coming. They will keep on coming. So you will keep on harvesting, you will keep on processing, because if you don't, you throw millions of pesos of value to fruits. So what do you do? You produce them as inventories. So, for supply chain practitioners, inventory is evil. It's good and it's evil. It's cost, it's working capital stuck there, storage space, warehouse space, potentially maluluma, and so on. So, it's not good, it's difficult. Next one, the dispersed operations, nakita natin, di ba? So, ang, ang key ngayon dyan is how do you make sure you control them? And then, uh, the long shipment lead time, uh, would pose a lot of risk for you in terms of being timely in serving your customer orders. Yung mga sinishare ni Christine kanina, mga realities, kasama kami dun. <laughs> yung mga medyo mababa yung fill rate, kasama kami dun. Kumbaga, merong sala kami dun. Because we do experience these issues. No? Uh, and then, yeah, force majeure. On a practical perspective, pag may bagyo, basta dumaan siya in any part of the country na merong port na magsasara, the marine authorities say they will shut down the port, then for us, everything stops on the shipment side. Because if, for example, the storm passes through Visayas, even the Mindanao ports will close. The Manila port will close as well. Kasi walang pupuntahan yung mga ibang barko eh. So the whole thing stops. Eh, papano na yun? More than 50% of the business comes from the south, and then the majority of your demand is in the north. So we are very reliant on that 38,000 TEUs of movement of goods. So it is a challenge for us no, when that happens. And then the industry issues, we talked about this. Uh, what, what, mga truck ban na yan, no? truck bans. Uh, remember the port congestion in Manila two years ago? That was a big nightmare for the industry as a whole. Uh, uh, everything will affect you because of our heavy reliance on the transport infrastructure. Because of the huge volume that we have to move. Because of how we are set up. No? And then lastly, uh, yan, yeah, volume drivers, no? Unigosyo, pineapple, distributors, and so on. Uh, neto, neto, all of these things are bearing on us, no? As far as, ano, as far as managing the supply chain is concerned. So, what do we do? On the supply variability, uh, we protect our key markets. Pag kulang yung supply, we protect the key markets. Ganun talaga, no? In, in times of uh, insufficient supply, you protect your key markets, you optimize your pricing at the same time. Uh, if there are excesses, we find a way to move it out. Sometimes, we sell it at break-even. Kaysa naman kargahin mo yung inventory sa warehouse and all that. And then your cash flow is being stuck there in inventory. Long shipment lead time, we have to learn how to strategically locate our products, our warehouses. It depends on our methodologies on where to put the inventories. The physically dispersed operations, we make sure that there is that information backbone that connects all the sites. And then we make sure that controls and standards and management routines are well in place. Mahirap yung company na nasa iba ibang lugar kayo, no? And then on industry issues that may affect us, especially on transport, we make sure that we have the right strategic relationships, no, with key uh, service providers. And then of course on force majeure, you try to find ways to, so, so that you have some level of uh, protection as far as your safety stocks are concerned. But other than that, you cannot do anything anymore, di ba? Kung matindi yung bagyo, oh, sorry, kumaga, wala ka na magagawa talaga. So, yan ang ano. And then, dito ko na isa-summarize lahat-lahat. No? I'll go back again. So, parang we looked at the big company, Del Monte Pacific, and then we zeroed in the, into the Del Monte Philippines operations. 
And then, dito, we'll, we'll, we'll go back again. No? Remember, when I superimpose the complexities relative to the business profile, the needs of the business, insights na, kumbaga, just one slide here. <clears throat> A vertically integrated supply chain is good. It can be a strength, but it can be a bane for you as well. Bakit kamo? Remember yung sinabi ko? Supply and demand, remember, it should always be linked. Pag gumalaw to, dapat gumalaw to. Baba dito, baba ito. Ideally, gusto mo yan as responsive. But remember, we have a very long lead time. That's why, as I said here, turning on a dime is not easy with a long tail in the chain. So, mahirap yun. That is, a, that is a very difficult challenge. No? Next one. <clears throat> when you try to address a problem, no? if you look at it from a process-based approach, kayo, industrial engineering majors, kayo, you will be heavily parang, uh, getting into this stuff, di ba? Operations, research, quantitative methods, and so on. Uh, you have to look at it from a process perspective and then be able to address the issues and opportunities as well so that you can always reduce your costs, your complexities, and you improve your flexibility and speed. No? Uh, next one, the solutions do not necessarily have to be very expensive. Ang importante that they are based on the right principles. No? If they are based on the right principles, then you're most likely going to be effective and successful with that. And then, ito nga, no? you are in a fast-moving consumer retail environment with a long lead time agriculture-based product, it is a nightmare no, from a supply chain perspective. Uh, I've, I've been with Johnson & Johnson for 20 years. Johnson & Johnson, baby powder, baby cologne, baby shampoo, lotion, etc., etc. When I joined Del Monte Philippines, it was multiple times more complex for me. So it was like a, it was like a big adjustment for me because of all of those variables and complexities that you have to deal with. And then, uh, ang importante is that you know, no? remember uh, that uh, integrated, vertically integrated chain, if you know where to uncouple to mitigate you from the changes, and then you know how to optimize with the situation of either excess or shortfall, then you can do, you will be able to manage it effectively. And then lastly ito, for a food business, always important would be product safety no? and sustainability will always be key. Especially if the chain is deeply entrenched in the lives of people in the communities that you operate in. Remember, I highlight ko kanina, the community work that the company does, the reality that you actually technically are working with farmers and kabarangays and communities, local governments. No? You really have to be uh, deeply entrenched no, in managing this very well. How do you feed 100 million people? <clears throat> that was the question. That was the tagline of this whole conference. I modify it a bit. I say here, better yet, how do you feed 100 million people in the next 100 years for us? Because we have been in the industry here for 92 years. No? So, uh, and this last comment to cap it off, is my own personal insight. No? For you to succeed again in the next 100 years, two simple phrases. You do the right things. You do the right things for your consumers. You do the right things for your employees and your people. You do the right things for your stakeholders and investors even. You do the right things for your community, your stakeholders, your responsibilities to the government and the environment as a whole. No? Because all of these things are what makes for a sustainable, successful company. And you do the right things and you do them right. What do I mean by that? You do that with the highest levels of ethical behavior. Uh, you follow the law and you make sure that uh, even you know, the standards you live by. So with that, I hope that it has steered some interesting information for you. And uh, I hope that you get, got to appreciate also what we do in Del Monte, Philippines. And that as to the students, again, my message to you, I hope it entices you to do well in your, in your schooling. You have two more years to go. 
and then look at the field of supply chain as a potential future career. So with that, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Aguilar. Thank you.